So Sam Bayer has sent over the RX 580. Yes, it's been out for a little while, mm, under a month anyway. But this is like the top of the range version. This is the RX 580, but this is by Sapphire, which mm, they're kind of like beating everyone else at the moment. I think even beating Asus, the Strix card. This is the overclocked version. This has also got eight gigabytes of memory on it. And it's got the quick connect where you can take the fans off. So you've got two fans on there. You can unscrew them and put these other fans on there, which is quite cool, but I haven't got them around me. So thanks so far for sending me just the graphics card, but not the fans. But the fans are actually on the graphics card, so it's okay, because you can still use it in the actual computer case to keep it cool and get the graphics card cool. Right, okay. At least we've got that out of the way. So we've got Dual X, uh, Dual Ball Bearing Fan, and all that sort of stuff, attention fan control. One fan stops, one fan keeps going, and... And vice versa, it's pretty cool. Free Sync 2, Real Live Capture. I think you've seen that in my other videos. I'm talking about, like, well, I don't even think I even talked about it. I did show you on my game capture as well, uh, going through the MD, MD, the M, AMD, uh, Relive or Relive, like, software. And it's pretty cool. But I couldn't get the um, capture card to work, so I had to use the. Um, the camera on there, which I hope I don't have to do on here. But if I do, then you still see the results. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, so, so far, this actually is meant to include, so it includes Tree X Unity, um, a Dual X Cooling Tech, Intelligent Fan Control, Dual Boring Bearing Fan, Quick Connect Fans, Digital Power, Black Diamond Choke, which means that it means that you can put more voltage for it, it's going to be more stable, and they're using the best sort of quality. Um, We've got long life polymer capacitors, it's a bit like Japanese capacitors, one of the best, they hold more voltage and you can do more old voltage and overclocking and it lasts longer because it's better quality, it's like a TV, if you notice with the Samsung TVs, the Samsung TVs used to, you bought them at a really premium rate and then you put them in your house, you had them for about a year to two years and all of a sudden it started not working, well that's to do with the capacitors and this is what's to do with motherboards and graphics cards and stuff like that and that's what's kind of happened, so the more quality of the capacitors the more longer they last so that's what that's about anyway so we got key features HDR ready third generation FinFET 14 uh, Radeon FreeSync 2 technology which was said read live capture and stream so you can stream at the same time because the graphics card is quite up to date and stuff obviously it will take down your frame rates per second a little bit less than what it would normally do unless you've got a really powerful CPU but then if you've got the CPU what I'm using at the moment, which is the 16X uh, by AMD, the Ryzen CPU, you should be okay, you should be able to stream it and game at the same time, but if you're using Intel, it's going to be a bit of a problem, smaller cores, even though it's got higher frequency speed, but if you overclock this and yada 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 and all that, but anyway, so we've got 4th generation uh, GCN, AMD Liquid VR technology, yes VR ready, AMD Virtual Super Resolution, VSR, so that's like a G-Sync thing, and it's AMD's version, AMD Crossfire technology, where you can connect two graphics cards together in a motherboard that supports it and it makes it into crossfire which means you get dual graphics normally not though because unless you've got a motherboard that's got 16 times bus on both lanes then you'll be able to get the optimized speed that you want to get through the graphics so say this graphics card produces 100 frames rates per second and your other one does 100 frame rates per second you should be gaining 200 frame rates per second but if you've only got 8 times bus and 16 times bus on one graphics card slot then you'll You'll only see like 75% increase, maybe 65, it depends, but yes, don't know. Anyway, OpenCL support, which is all good, so yes, I think this works on Direct 12 and Direct 11, so that's all right. Uh, output display ports, it's got two times, HDMI and two times, no, actually, it's got display ports. It's got two of them and two HDMI and one DVI sub. And the memory bus is 256 bit. And obviously, I said it's a Radeon RX 580. So that's pretty cool. Let's get this sucker out of the box and uh, see what you get with it. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to just be doing stock levels. And then the next video is going to be about overclocking this graphics card. So you get this. This is. Um, Sapphire product registration, so as soon as you get that, register it in case your graphics card, something happens, goes wrong with it. Easy to find, join the system and sort you out. Um, you get a CD, because everyone's got CDs in 2017. Um, I have still, but yeah. 
Uh, what's that? Manufacturer Sapphire Technology Limited and all that sort of stuff. That's address and all that. And then uh, graphics quick installation guide. That's in there as well. And is there anything else in there? Nope. So we put this box to the side and then we get the graphics card and the static electricity bag. We put it out. One thing you don't get is a screwdriver. You have to have your own screwdriver. Anyway, before I talk about the actual graphics card itself, on the top here you see there's one screw and then you see another screw. You can undo that and you can take the fans out and you can put new fans in and they glow up if you want to get um, ones that glow and ones that don't glow. These are just the basic fans. They sound really smooth, the boiler rings on it. It's really quite light and smooth. Anyway, Sapphire logo printed on there. We are Sapphire. Dun, 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 dun. Eight pin um, EPS connect, not EPS connector, PCI connector. And look at that lovely back plate. So this bit here is where the fan should blow over the top and, and cool it down. But um, not too sure yet if it works or not. But it looks pretty good. Uh, the design of it is pretty good, but it's a little bit not me. I would like a perfect black sort of um, back plate. But to, to know that you get a back plate for like 200 odd quid on a graphics card that weighs this much. And look at these lovely heat pipes as well. Really nice looking heat pipes. It looks like it dissipates heat from the top, up the top here, and also at the top here, and obviously on the back. As I said before, two HDMI ports, two display ports, one DVI out, and a big little heat sink to get the heat out there of the, of the side of the case. And like, it just looks, it screams quality to be honest with you. Like, it really does. It looks really cool. I like the fins are inside there. They look really strong. They don't look like the weak metal sort of type. When you touch it, it bends up. It looks like it will do the job what it's meant to. Aesthetically pleasing to the eye at the front. But at the back, it means you have to do a black and red or white and silver sort of build. And I've got orange and black in there. And it won't go with a red. But... I don't know. It looks like you can take the black plate off or they might be doing something where you can get different designs on the back plate, which would be quite cool. And on the side here, which is last bit, is where you can get, you can see, look, I'm rubbing it and the heat sink's awesome. It's not bending or nothing like that. You know, like on a CPA cooler, the fins are really, really thin or like a radiator that's like really soft. Well, look at that. Really solid. So that means it's going to dissipate heat really well and it screams quality. But now we're going to populate this into the test rig right here and we're going to do some stock benchmarks so we're going to be using Firecry and we're going to be using um, uh, Timespire we're going to do a stability test and see if it's any throttling because I'm using a 1600X which it wouldn't be because it's like got loads of cores and stuff and loads of virtual cores and this graphics card is an AMD one so it should work really well and that so as I said, this graphics card is going to work really well in that system. No bottleneck in, and it sh we should get some decent displays. Displays, 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 displays. I mean, graphics, 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 graphics. I sound crazy, don't I? I'm talking about frame rates per second. So more, more bottleneck in. It should be okay. It's 2017. Even though this is just a refresh of the RX 480, it's slightly got more performance. Actually, it should hopefully have loads of performance. See that? I caught that really well. Anyway, let's get this in the system.
All in all, great graphics card, great all round dark, could easily do 1440p on there and 2560 resolution and also it could also do 1920 by 1080 resolution really well because obviously that's a lower resolution than the one I just said before. 4K, no, you won't be doing anything with 4K but it's still, the graphics card really does perform well, it, is, it does run really hot, um, I haven't overclocked it or anything like that, this is all stock and these are all with the highest um, settings turned up to the maximum so I can see the kind of frame rates I'm going to be getting averaging around 60 to 70 frames per second some games were like over 120 frames per second off that graphics card it was it was crazy um, went through all the bench tests, flew through them but I leave it down to you, I'll let you decide what you think compare it to other people's benchmarks with the other, G, uh, with the other GTX 5E's with the other RX 580's, 570's, 560's, 550's against the GTX 1050's, 1050's Ti's 1060, 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti this could go on forever couldn't it? but basically compare the benchmarks with Time Spy and um, Fire Strike those are the ones that you kind of want to know like the kind of uh, well if you're into obviously um, scores and stuff and see which is the best score and which is the best sort of graphics card that's what you need to go with anything else with frame rates per second you're not too bothered about it you want to make sure that you uh, can get a reasonable budget graphics card or even like an entry level because this one's quite decent it's better than entry but there is graphics cards on that level, five uh, RX 580s that are around 220, 230, going all the way up to around nearly 300 pound. So it depends on what one you want to get. But this is the Sapphire one, and I made a mistake thinking I had um, the other version, which is faster than the other graphics cards that are in the RX 580 line. But this one clocked at 600, uh, no, 1366 megahertz. Some are clocked over uh, 1425 megahertz with a boost clock. So I just left it as it is, didn't bother doing any overclocking or anything like that. The card runs quite warm anyway. And um, yeah, other than that, it's decent, you've got a decent performance. There's nothing else I can say about it other than anyone can help me with a HDCP problem. With any NVIDIA graphics card, I can do game capturing, no problem. When it comes down to doing the RXs or the AMD range, it won't let me capture. It's always some sort of problem. I know there's splitters and stuff you can use, but I want to know if there's something you can enable and switch off a driver because I'm really getting frustrated. I couldn't re didn't really want to do it on the camera. I really wanted to go for a game capture card so you can see frame rates per second and the heat. Um, how it's going well with the CPU and stuff and the memory and voltage but I can't really show you all that on the camera because it only focuses in one point and it's really annoying so anyone that's got any ideas of how to switch that off or anything like that then let me know down in the comments down below but if you like this video give me loads of subscribes loads of subscribers if there's those subscribers that want to subscribe to this channel, subscribe, that's what I mean. Now, if you like this video, like it, subscribe, share this content. It helps out a lot. Follow me on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that sort of stuff for updates and whatever I'm doing. I might be at events. I might be talking to someone very special about certain things that they know about that's coming out that I can let information out, but probably not. But anyway, other than that, I've got merch store. Check out hoodies, T-shirts, hats cups, mugs, all that sort of stuff and what else? Yeah, that's it actually and yeah, I'll see you in the next one, thanks for watching